Anybody there? Hey, how do you say your name? Mer, just say Mer maybe. Hi, Amy, Elizabeth. Sometimes I don't know if they're your last names or your first, Carrie Mitchell, Amber. Linda Tully, yay, you got here. Carrie Mitchell, oh, thanks for knocking my thing. My, my son is helping me because I can't find my behind with both hands today. So, um, thank you for showing up. Thank you so much. Um, why don't you uh, put where you're from? Because I think it would be really fun for everybody to uh, introduce each other and realize that we're... Oh, that's very nice, Sarah. My hair. That's one of the things I want to talk about. Like, what do we do with our hair in this season? Hey, Birdie. Hey, Dane. Brasil. Yes. My son is learning Brazilian Portuguese. He has a new friend who's a girl, but Ask him, uh, she's just a friend. Say to them. But, um, well, why don't you tell, why don't you speak Portuguese to them? Mississippi, Netherlands, yeah, bring it on. Beaufort, South Carolina, Australia, Chile, yay. Maryland, Connecticut, Soul Spark. Where are you from, Emilio? Yeah, but it's more from Brazil. Yes, Uruguay. Yay, Toodley, where are you from? Tell them. She's from Louisiana. That's a terrible accent, but I'll just, you know, keep making bad jokes. And Millersburg, PA. Yeah, France. Yay, France. Canada. All right, Lori. Hi, Mary Bam. Hi. Australia, you got it. What? What is it? Four o'clock in the morning there? I'm so. I, I just might tear up, and I'm not gonna get through this. Iran. What time is it in Iran? UK. Yay! Thank you. I know it's about seven over there, because I have another friend that lives there, and she said it's about seven o'clock. Um, Spain. Hola. Um, Austria, George, Giorgio or George, or Jorge, Austria. No, it would be some kind of George. Toodley. That's, I'm excited. I'm excited. So I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, this this is really strange that this is going on for so long. And um, I've been dealing with, you know, stay at home for a long time. So I think, as I said last week, I, I think I can speak into it a little bit. Although French in Italy, thank you, Lolly. I know I'm gonna kill your names, but part of it is my eyeballs. But because um, if I put these on, uh, I can't see far and the phone is kind of far from me, but I don't need regular glasses. So if I do this, I can't see anything. But if I do this, I can see my work. So it's a it's a trade off. But uh, Crabber's mom. Yay. Amy out of dust. Where are you from, Amy? Let everybody know. Maury. Yay! What are you doing up so late? I love you for that. There's people on here from Australia. I think it's like four o'clock in the morning there. If I, if I'm doing the math right, but you know that that's always questionable. But um, yeah, say hello to each other, and um, yeah. So I have a couple things that just randomly are, are going on in my mind, and the first one is you know. How are you doing with random? Because for me, when I first had to stop working full time, um, which 
was on and off uh, while one of my sons was sick, you know, I still kept up routine. And I think it's because I had kids and meal times and things like that. Uh, but little by little, uh, you know, I started to get a little bit more random and um, I didn't have a real tight schedule. It kind of operated around theirs. Hi, Joan, Joan Gantz, hello. Oh, thank you. My, they, my hair, that, that's, that's the next thing I'm gonna talk about. I'm talking about like, what do we do with our hair at this time? Cause this is, I know you're on here for art, but we're here for art and talk, right? At least I am. <laughs> You know, you know, this is for me, right? Because I like to talk to some people and now everybody's home in the day. Not just me anymore. Yay. See, I have a house full of people now. I would go for like 12, 14 hours with nobody in the house for years. It's kooky. That's why I do the kooky art that I do, you know. You're in Perth. It's 1 a.m. there. Wow, yeah, I guess it depends. I think it was Melbourne that I thought would be for such a big country. Oh, thank you. But you know, I, I was saying a couple of weeks ago that I was thinking about letting my hair grow out and going gray. And uh, you know, I think that just might happen. It, you know, it might be a good time. Um, but um, yeah, so anyway, I'm talking about random. See, oh, I, I am random, so. Uh, but as time went by, um, I had been in advertising and I realized that it was my job that I, I was very disciplined and I never missed a deadline in 26 years. And, um, and I had done that, you know, since I graduated college. And, um, so I had no idea that I didn't have an internal organization clock. Uh, no idea. You know, I, I had deadlines, you know, I just made deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Even if I had to stay up all night because I procrastinate and that should have been a good hint. Um, I, you know, I am the queen procrastinator and I'm not proud of that. And that's something that's coming to the surface that needs to go. Um, but as time went by and I had to stay home like you guys are all doing now, I'm just wondering if it's been a couple weeks, I know for you guys, and, and I know I kept my routine for quite a while, whether your routine, there's a routine in place, or whether it's starting to fall apart, um, that's, that's a hard thing to keep together. Um, so does anybody out there get up in the morning and take a shower and get ready just like you're starting your day? Just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I know you're fascinated by that question. It's trivial. <laughs> so similar. At least Lynn McCreary's talking to me. The, the internal clock, it, it, it goes. It's very weird. You know, I eat, I eat, you know, breakfast at lunch time, you know, and dinner is dinner and, you know, but now that my guys are home, um, yeah, I mean, I've actually been having five o'clock dinners. I'm, I'm, I'm like, that's lunchtime. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so not me, Bell Creators. What does that mean? You're getting dressed and ready and, you know, putting your hair and makeup together. Linda Tully, yeah, still got that in place. Joan, hi, Joan. Tell everybody where you're from, Joan. Anyway, um, so that's something I wanted to talk about, just, um, you know, considering some of the things that we have taken for granted in terms of our routine. And uh, those of us who are very routine oriented are, are really struggling with this, you know, um, I'm not going to say it's OCD, but, you know, my husband is very regimented. And he really, you know, you can just see, and he can't, he can't put his finger on what it is that's annoying him. But I know after being married to him for 30 some years, um, that um, his, his routine is, is drastically altered. Um, but as the week goes by, you know, we're kind of building a new one. So you haven't worn a bra for three weeks now? Yeah, yeah. Dan, burn the bra. 
Who needs it? I sure as heck don't. <laughs> I, I could go down in a whole rabbit hole with that, you know. But I, I, it'll be inappropriate, so I won't. Um, okay, I want to tell you something else that happened. Uh, this is just small talk. The, the other day, I had this incredible nosebleed. And it, it was, I mean, really, I thought, <laughs> uh, you guys are eating your lunch and probably grossing you out, which reminds me of another story. But I got this incredible nosebleed. I was just laying down. And when I got up, I just, it was just coming out. And I grabbed a garbage can and my husband came in and it was just going and going and going and going. And uh, so, <laughs> but it reminded me now that it's lunchtime for some of you or you're eating, um, that when I was in sixth grade, I mean, who cares? But when I was in sixth grade, I think it was sixth grade. And then we go into the cafeteria for lunch. And um, back then they had microphones, so that old fashioned mics that were on a stand, uh, so that whoever, what, whatever teacher was proctoring the lunchroom at the time could, you know, direct us or yell at us or keep us in line or call us up for lunch. So I, I came in and I wanted to go, uh, I, I was squeezing by the wall to kind of get past the mic because the teacher wasn't there. And I stepped on the wire because the wire attached to the microphone and the whole thing came down and hit me in the head. And, and I was just, you know, seeing stars and all of a sudden, you know, head wounds, it just started to run and run and run. And I, I was, you know, whoa, seeing stars, but all of a sudden everybody was eating spaghetti. And I just saw, you know, people dumping their spaghetti <laughs> into the garbage can. <laughs> So I ruined a whole lot of people's lunch. And then I, you know, I had to lope down to the nurse's office and I ended up getting six stitches. And, you know, uh, you know, those are odd stories. And I still have that scar. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's right here. It's one of those vertical scars. So it was nasty. But uh, yeah, so the nosebleed, it, it was really nasty. But I learned that I used to always put my head back. You're not supposed to do that. If I had done that, I would have swallowed all that blood. You got to hold your head forward and hold your nose. Very important. You might want to take notes about that. But just in case, the bat head back is no good. All the blood goes down your throat. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about is... I was gonna ask what you're doing about your hair and your hair products in these days, but um, I guess that's pretty random and I know that you're probably struggling too. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was delay. I was thinking about these things in the shower. You know, I believe that as hard as things are now, a lot of things get shaken. And, and some of that is like dross. And it's like gold comes to the top when dross sinks to the bottom. Um, or like centrifugal force with cream and dairy and what have you. But um, since I am a procrastinator, um, you know, I procrastinated doing some things that actually turned out to be really good. And I just wondered if you guys had some, had had some plans or found out the same thing where uh, you really wanted to do something and you were pushing hard to do it and the door kept closing and the door kept closing and you felt really frustrated and disappointed, but now you realize it was a good thing. Does anybody have anything like that if you think about it that happened and it turned out for the best? Give me some emoji, something, anybody. Is anybody alive out there? Well, anyway, I was supposed to go to North Carolina. Elizabeth, what, what, um, what did you put off or what didn't happen for you that you may have really wanted to very badly and turned out to be a good thing? Well, I was um, supposed to go to North Carolina to a conference and my husband kept saying, book the flight, book the flight. And I kept saying, I'm gonna book the flight, gonna book the flight, gonna book the flight. And I kept putting it off, putting it off. And I mean, it was the same week and I was still putting it off. 
and they were still going to do it. And I said, well, it's a good thing I put it off because if I book flights now, nobody's going to want to fly, so we'll get, you know, our tickets cheap. Well, it turned out that they did cancel at the very last minute. They held on, they held on and held on, but they canceled. So it, it was a good thing that I did put that off. So that turned out to be a, a good thing. Um, and I think if you think about it, certain things may have happened that seemed negative, but they were positive for such a time as this. You did a commission that you struggled with, but now it's your favorite wall art. Well, very neat, very neat. It's, yeah, and it's a good time to try something new in your art. You know, I'm finding that um, I don't feel like making the same kind of art anymore. At first it seemed like I didn't feel like making art, but when I really, you know, dug deep and thought about it, because things are so different, I mean, I guess our my art has to reflect that. Uh, and so I just decided to start doing different things. And, um, you know, I love my bright colors and everything, and I'm probably gonna work with bright colors here because I'm gonna fix something today. And it, I don't know what you guys are gonna work on. It's, you know, free flow. Um, but now I'm I'm feeling like more muted and and it's not in a bad way. I mean, I'm really peaceful. Um, you know, I'm a woman of faith, so I you know, I I trust God and um and whatever, you know, your your source is. But I I realize that like my number of days are established before I'm even born, so you know, uh, I'm not going to be able to add or take away from them. And I really believe that. So, you know, if if I'm destined to live, I'm going to live. And uh, if I'm not, I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> but I just don't want to be there when it happens. Like, it sounds terrible for people that have had, that have COVID. Um, you're trying to do portraits, which are, norm, are not normally you. Well, that that's great. You know, I was thinking it would be really cool to do dueling portraits. We used to do that in our class, right, Joan Gans? Like we would turn to each other and the person that you were looking at obviously didn't have to sit still, but you kind of went after the essence of the person. So they were all, you know, uh, recognizable as a person, but they were distorted and abstract. But it was amazing how people captured the essence of the person. And very often, I mean, that's how I transitioned into doing abstract work. I was a representational painter when I was first learning to paint, um, which was different than, than graphic design. Although graphic design served me very well because I didn't know that really for 26 years I was looking at a page and deciding how I was gonna handle the space. So that really served me well. And so when I, you know, stumbled upon the elements of design and stuff uh, in fine art, um, I, I didn't know them. Um, I realized that I, I, that's something I could understand. And that's why I'm really big on teaching it because um, when I first started teaching, the transition was that there were a lot of people in my classes that painted representationally and wanted to move toward abstraction and when they uh and so that's why the course was called path to abstraction which ended up to be a 12-year journey and i was on it as well and um yeah joan you you were great at that and so sometimes we would do four pieces a lot of times we'd work in fours um but we would do four pieces and you might ha bring a you know a uh, reference photo or a little still life or whatever and start out doing it, you know, realistically. And then on the next quadrant, you'd change it, you know, and decide on, you know, whether it was going to be flat or whether it was going to be bright colors or muted colors or a value painting and then another one and another one. And by the time it got to the fourth square, it was very, um, very distorted and abstract. 
And so it's kind of interesting, you know, if you're in that lane or if you, you tend to have um, an academic bend toward your art, but you are interested in abstraction or you are working in abstraction, which everyone talks about as in intuitive. Uh, intuitive is, is helpful to a certain extent, but it, it doesn't necessarily translate to help you understand like how to get what's in your head out. Or if you don't have a vision in your head, which a lot of times we don't, we just start putting color on a page and we layer. But how do you make decisions and ask the right questions to be able to evaluate your work? And a lot of that is about knowing the questions to ask. You know, it's like, I'm not sure, you know, and you might be in a, um, a critique group or something and, 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 and you know, somebody will, uh, you know, good naturedly say, well, you know, I think maybe if you add a, a little red over here to balance the red over there, or, you know, you got to do things in threes. So really you kind of have two here. So maybe you need a third somewhere else. I mean, that's okay, but they're, they're not hard and fast rules and they very well, their opinions really. So when you learn the elements of design and the way that I critique work is that, you know, I, you know, I, I ask questions and I teach students to, to evaluate their own work. Um, and so, you know, it's a question of, of, you know, what's doing the talking, you know, if you're, if you've got a really busy piece and it's getting, you know, just, it's way chaotic and, and you know, I work that way, then you might need a little bit of air someplace else so that the eye can track and it has some place to rest. Um, you know, that's noise, uh, as opposed to something that's quiet or it's texture as opposed to something that's smooth. If you have those imbalances, it, can be mo it needs to be mostly something and it needs to have support players underneath it. But that's the long and short of it. So anyway, um, so that's how we transitioned into abstract art. And a lot of you may be, be doing that. And so it is really great to work in fours sometimes and, and just keep distorting. Like you said, you're, you're starting to do faces and then start to distort the faces or do dueling portraits and distort, you know, uh, the person that's sitting there. Cause people, you know, we're not models. We, you know, we're not going to hold still. We might, I actually had to teach a class once where I went to take a class with a really great portrait and um, figure drawing uh, teacher, and he just didn't show up. So everybody was there and they paid for it and they're all good to go. And I was like, uh, I, I can teach the class. I think I can at least proctor the class. And then it was like, well, we don't have a model. So I actually modeled <laughs> and taught the class. <laughs> That is another long rabbit hole story. And it's really, it was, it was crazy, but the class and the show did go on. So that's some of my crazy paths to even becoming a teacher. Cause I really didn't want to teach. I, I was like, no, I just want to paint. I don't want a bunch of brats around me. I like what I'm doing and I don't know how to tell people what I'm doing. I'm just doing it, you know? Um, but it, it, helped me become a little bit better a painter too. So what are some of you working on today? You know, I did, uh, you know, I think I got a little Jenny. I think I got a little, a little, uh, models fee that day. And I, I sat really still and it's really a good thing that I, you know, had a really cute outfit on. I had like a little, spaghetti strap, um, black top with a, like a Western skirt or something. The reason I know is because there's a lot of those out there. And, um, uh, but I did get paid for that. Um, it was just a little bit, but I, you know, I did it as a donation. I, what did happen is I got a teaching job there. And I didn't do it intentionally. 
You know, it's just like Instagram. Like if you put out a lot of goodwill and you open yourself up, um, you know, people will find you. Um, and again, so I, I just was very concerned. <laughs> I can get overly responsible for people's feelings. Um, that something needed to happen. And so that's what I made happen and end up, ended up opening a door to a teaching job there. So I ended up, I guess, teaching at one, two, three, four, five different art institutes. And I said I wasn't going to teach. <laughs> so, I have a question. Maybe you can help me. I see live painters paint portraits quickly. Um, I don't see the rest of it. I kind of lost it there. Paint portraits. Can, uh, maybe you can help me. I see live painters that they paint only certain spaces in the face and concentrate on those spaces, which exactly are those spaces called. Um, I don't know. I know that there's something called blocking and that there are uh, certain things about um, faces and heads, like your forehead, okay, the, the, of a normal person, a white person this is, because for um, black people, it's different, but it is, there's a different skull type, evidently. This is what I was taught, but and I and I have painted from all kinds of, um, but I, you know, I'm not an academic painter anymore, or or never really was, but if you take the forehead, the space from the forehead to the chin, all right, from here, that needs to be equal. So if one is longer or shorter, I mean, there are people's faces that are somewhat distorted, but that's a good rule of thumb. Then it's like the eye, the eye, like when you're trying to figure out where to put it on the face. Um, and how close to put it. This is just a couple of general rules. Again, everybody has a different face structure, but generally with eyes, they need to be an eye apart. An eye apart. Um, with ears, where do they start? Um, ears start where the eye edge is, okay? I know I don't like showing my ears, they keep growing. But um, they, they start there in line with the eye. So that's something else. And then generally there's usually here and here, but not for everyone. You know, we all have different faces and things like that, but that's a quick and dirty thing that I can give you. Um, but Erica, yeah, you, you, you do beautiful work. Um, this whole story, I was thinking it was nude modeling and I love the idea of you solemnly lecturing on composition while draped. Yeah, yeah, I did. You know, like I, I, you know, during the breaks I would talk and I would walk around the room during the break and, and help. And again, I'm not, a, a, you know, a portrait artist, um, the whole reason I, as I started to say that I went into abstraction is that I was doing um, more and more, um, I was working in watercolors and I was doing more and more uh, inventive color and things like that. And so as I started to do inventive color, you know, uh, it didn't really make sense. You know, if I wanted to do pink tree trunks, it didn't really make sense with a, a, a with a realistic drawing. So, you know, when you start to distort reality, then you have to look at possibly distort, distorting everything and flattening space and things like that. So, you know, I, I, I might do my realistic drawing, but then, you know, the next one, if I wanted to do something like Wolf Khan and I would do pink tree trunks, they were very much simplified, you know? And, um, you know, uh, purple skies, purple skies are, you do see purple in the sky, but I mean, really deep purples and things like that, you may not. And making shadows red, um, things like that. You, you know, it, you, if you do it realistically, like you've always been doing, it just falls apart. 
it's like um, you know difference between somebody who's a great cartoon artist and um, and ones that kind of fall short. Um, sometimes it's in the middle, and if it's in the middle, you know, it's like well, it kind of. And this just happened to me when I was in advertising, if I did illustrations. They'd want me to do illustrations, cartoons of things. And in the corporate world, they were like, well, can you make those a little bit more real? Well, yeah. But when I made them a little bit more real, they were just bad art. <laughs> you know what I mean, it was, they were neither here nor there. They weren't funny. And um, so it has to be, you know, you have to make a commitment. You, at some point, you make a leap. So even though it's recognizable, when you start to invent inventive color, flatten space, then you distort your trees, you distort your still life, okay, uh, like Picasso did, um, all of that, you know, it, it, you have to make a commitment, and you have to know the questions to ask, and some of them are, you know, what am I going for? What I was going for is I wanted to, I wanted to paint a subject, but I wanted to paint how I felt about the subject. And if that was a joyous feeling, then I was going to invent and use colors that were joyous. Um, and sometimes that was somewhat intuitive. Um, so, you know, I, I really didn't get in here to lecture you guys, but that that is kind of part of the process. Um, if you're doing strictly abstraction, you know, you, you need elements of design even more because we're not working from a subject and we don't have uh, any reference to turn to return to, to look to see what we need to do next. And so, you know, with the elements of design and the principles of design, they're not meant to like, you know, get you all tightened up and everything, just to kind of help you finish up and, and find your way and, and to, uh, you know, take a hash, you know, and make something that, people want to look at and kind of linger around. Sometimes if something's too chaotic, sometimes you want chaos, all right? If you want chaos, good. But chaos is hard to look at without having an area of rest or something that's different, okay? Because you'll just move, you know? You go to a museum and there's some paintings that you're gonna linger around and others that you're just gonna walk by. Um, a lot of that has to do with the, the design. I mean, you can be a, a great illustrator, uh, a great realistic artist, and I, I love realism. I'm not, um, you know, uh, an abstract snob. Good realism is good. Good art is good art. You know, but sometimes, you know, I, I'd see something technically done really, really well and very hard to speak to. Um, sometimes an artist that's so technically good um, about composition, but sometimes it'd be so technically great, but the composition, you know, weakened it. You know, like if something, it all depends on the feeling, you know, it lacked a feeling, but also, you know, again, most people know that you don't put your horizon line in the middle. It's either, you know, one third, two third, whatever, but you can also exaggerate the heck out of that. And I did that when I was abstracting landscapes. You know, I'd put my, my, my horizon line really low or really high, you know, and just have light coming over the top or whatever. But um, a lot of times you'll see something and it's really good and you can appreciate the, the, the technique, technique. But the space division is off. And so it just falls short of being fabulous. Um, and because you're, you know, micromanaging sometimes. And a lot of artists haven't been taught composition. I mean, nobody that taught me life drawing taught composition. They didn't dress the page. You just did a you just did a face and you put it in the middle of a page. And and what's going on out here it was never addressed, you know. And so when I started to teach it, um, even though I'm not necessarily skilled in that, I'm good enough, you know. I can draw, um, but. Um, 
I would have people utilize things that are in the background and, and have that serve to place the model in an environment. And I rarely had my students work from nudes because I felt that what they wore also added to their personality. And sometimes I would even have them talk about who they are and stuff like that. And some students really liked it and some people hated it. You know, they just wanted me to shut up and they wanted to get to what you do in a life drawing class. And they just wanted me to walk around and proctor. But that's all, it's all a learning process, you know? And um, I, I, I'm patient with it all. You know, um, so feel free to, to be you and, and, and any questions I like to answer. This may be off the beaten track, but I hope that you guys are drawing while we're doing this. Um, give me some emojis. Is anybody doing art while we're talking? Because you don't have to look at me. You can just, lit, you know, um, thinking that as a nude model and love the idea of someone with lecturing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Not everybody did like that playing the three minute doodle of me. Ah! Yeah, that's true. Oh my gosh, you guys could do crazy portraits of me. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Oh my God. Now, it's, there's no late. There's no late, Karen. Um, it's, um, you know, this is come and go. This is coffee shop talk. You know, you come in, you grab a coffee if you can, if you're running late. My son got me, brought me a cup of coffee. And it says, uh, oh, I love how, <laughs> I love how we don't have to say out loud that I'm your favorite child. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And then over here, what does it say? Your favorite child. But anyway, so, um, I'm going to try to figure out next time how I can drop in. I know you can drop in people, but they can send you an invitation and you can have them come in. So I'm going to try to do that so different people can maybe show me what they're working on and stuff. But right now, um, I'm, I'm just working on top of things that I did that I, I, I didn't really love. Um, Let me see if I can move this down. I don't have my stuff set up, but I can, and then I'll just start working. And you guys work too, okay? You're working on mixed, me mixed media work? Okay, watercolor abstract challenge on Yupo. Is that the way to say it, Joan? Is it Yupo or Yuppo? I always heard Yupo, but I wanna try that. We should get together at your beach house. <laughs> She has the most fabulous beach house. People died and stand in line to go to her beach house. And she's been so, so she's one of my old, she's not old in old age, one of my old students. And, um, you know, she would come and she would go. But um, always, always a pleasure. Um, you know, one of those students that gives a lot, makes it easy to teach, you know, um, very willing, although she's, she's, um, She's an amazingly gifted artist. She can do it all. Uh, always flexible and willing to take constructive criticism. Um, so be careful though, who, who you have speak into your art life, okay? Because artists are really sensitive and fragile. And it's like I said before about the critique. I don't give my opinion. I base it on the elements of design and I let them say, well, is it mostly light? Is it mostly dark? Is it mostly warm? Is it mostly cool? And then you answer those questions. And if it's all in the middle, then you have to make those decisions. Or if one or two are in the middle, then those are the places that you have to decide. You know, If it's in the middle with your values, maybe push it toward dark or push it toward light. But in the middle, we'll, we'll kind of keep it flat like a, like a C. So you can either you know ha have an A or you can have a C. I don't need any more C paintings, and Jonah's heard me say this before. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm redoing some of these. I mean, this this is this is crazy. It, it's not terrible, all right, but um, it's pretty chaotic. And um, you know, right now I'm not feeling it. So um, and and it was a study in just working in two colors, uh, plus black and white, and. Um, 
I have one. Here's another one. Way too busy. Way too busy. Way too busy. Way too busy. Okay, way too busy. See, that's when you know I'm a little frantic. Um, but this one that's still on the pad, um, now, a year later, I, I'm liking this. It's simpler. So I think what I'm doing is moving from, you know, line into shape. And those are different elements of design. Some of you really love uh, texture, you know, and I'm, I'm going to move into texture. And I am going to do a little mini course on texture because um, <laughs> I thought I would just send out one a month. You know, I did one on shape. Um, my main courses are all about the elements of design at once and building up. Um, and then I thought I would do little mini ones on each one and what, so you could really get that under your belt. But um, I got distracted. <laughs> so I think my next one's gonna be, gonna be on uh, texture. But anyway, uh, so I, I do find myself really uh, being enamored with shape now. Um, so my, this one is, you know, pretty much shape dominant, you know, you can see that it's got a lot of uh, kind of amorphic shapes. And so I might want to get in here and, um, and I think that they are pretty much the same size right now. So, you know, I might get in and alter that because that's an element of design, size. If you have a shape, you have size. So I might want to uh, mess around with that now and decide whether I want it to be mostly large or mostly small. Um, but, um, and mostly organic or mostly geometric. But I have to decide on what I want to dominate. And I, when I finally, and I can play around with that. I don't, I don't always go direct to stuff. You know, I'll just play around with it until it feels like you know what, I'm going to name this per se. You know, I'm going to name this warm. I'm going to name this large. I'm going to name this. Once you decide on it, you, you get it, you finally happen on that intention, then you, you know how to finish it. Okay? So anyway, are we working together or am I just talking to you guys? Giving you le art lectures. Um, who's working with... Anybody working with crayons? Watercolor? Abstract challenge on Yupo. I wanna try that. So you know, then all these are coming up. Yeah, it's little on here for me. Okay. I'm gonna turn this. Hi, Adriana, thank you so much from Romania. What time is it there? Anybody that came in new, please say where you're from, because it's really nice to know that we're sitting around this global campfire together, you know, making art and talking. Um, yeah, I didn't actually drink any of my coffee yet. Brazil, all you Brazilian people, I'm still on a Brazil kick with my coffee. I love Brazilian coffee. It's a dark roast. I've gone to the dark side. I have to say. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to I'm going to turn it down here and I think what I'm going to do is um sometimes it's not always about adding stuff. Sometimes it's letting things go. And don't you think that's kind of apropos for these times? It's like pare it down. How much toilet paper do you really need? I've been seeing that meme that says something like, I don't know about spinning that, spinning that roll like the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> now it's like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's be real here, you know? Uh, anyhow, uh, rabbit trail. I'm gonna take some gesso. I think, because I don't really have my white paint here. And, um, and I'm going to obliterate some stuff. So I'll show you. 
Um, I don't know where it's going to go, and I, I don't know what decisions I'm going to make about it. Um, I'm going to leave that other one that I kind of like because I, I think I can bring that home pretty well. But, um, all right, let's see if you can see this. Uh, I think you can see that pretty good. I should tape it. I gotta steal a piece of tape from myself. Can you guys see it? Give me some love. I need to know you can see it. It's a square. Okay, nobody's talking back to me. Why do I feel like I'm talking to myself? Wow, it's almost two o'clock. Cause we kind of end this at two cause I want you guys to work, you know? I, I, oh. I just did a teaching and I said I wasn't gonna teach. I'm sorry. Will you come back next week? Well, anyway, um, for whoever's still there, maybe I'll talk about, no, I'm not talking about anything. I'm just talking, I'm going, I was gonna talk about edges, but I'm not gonna, not gonna teach. Okay, I'm just gonna obliterate some stuff here. And um, maybe I'm gonna make other shapes that have these shapes in them. I'm gonna reclaim the shapes, all right? Just because I know that I can pretty quickly. And so I'm not gonna hold you guys for more than a, a, a little over an hour. Okay, so uh, how will I reclaim the shapes? I don't know, I'm gonna give this a whirl. So I'm gonna use gesso, you could use white paint. And the reason I taped this is because I don't wanna move it out of camera, but it's not, it's not staying taped. So I am getting rid of some things. Um, and maybe what I'll do is, is uh, I'll let some of those kind of bleed off and uh, This is just a real, real quick demo in, in subtraction. Sometimes you just need to get rid of stuff. Really hard to get rid of it, okay? Uh, took me a long time over here to get all these little things, but you know, I love doing this, so it's, it's kind of therapeutic for me, so it's okay. Something like this, I might want it to overlap a little bit, you know? I don't want it to be really a straight, a straight split, straight space. So I'll kind of scratch that back a little. Um, not planned, okay, not planned. Um, maybe I'll let some of those live. But I'll kind of keep it connected to one big shape there just so this is really quick for you guys. But I don't want you to get bored. So I'm trying to be brave so that, you know, you're, you go for it too and be brave. Try something new. I really wanna to try to quiet down my work a little bit. Um, it's just time. It's just time. And sometimes what's going on, you know, in your life, it, you know, it is reflected in your artwork. And if your artwork is honest, it is, you know, you, you're going to get to a place where you don't know how you paint anymore. But that's okay. That's when you're transitioning. So please don't get disheartened. And I want to speak to people who, you know, um, may not have a big following and but are doing a, amazing work and might think that there's no point 
Um, I, I have to tell you that if you're an artist and you have this desire in your heart, then to not to paint is to deny yourself. It's not a matter of what other people think. Although, you know, we all would like to sell our work. I mean, I get that. I, I don't know how I got as many followers as I did. I just kept working and posting and chatting and and trying to, you know, talk about what what's like I do, like I'm doing here, like what's what's real in my life, you know, somebody has to go first. And so uh, oftentimes an artist is a pioneer and people won't understand your work yet. Maybe they just don't understand your work yet. But you just keep doing what's honest for you and trust the process. And if you feel like it's time to maybe change, like if you use really bright colors, like I was saying, I really like bright colors too. Uh, and, and you want to mute them down and all of a sudden, you know, you get five likes rather than 50 uh, or, or whatever. Um, keep going. Keep going. Because you can't paint by committee. You know, only you know what, 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 you, what makes you happy. And, and if, if you really are affected by, you know, what, you know, by the response on Instagram, get off. Just get off for a while, you know, and, and, and paint by yourself. It, you know, it, it's hard not to go on and look. It's very addicting. But by the same time, it, it can be very, um, it can mess with your head. You know, unless you really got your head on straight. And, you know, who does? But anyway, that's kind of weird. And I'll keep working on it, but I want to look at you guys. So if anybody's still here, would you give me some emojis? Still here? Sitting in the sun? Oh, nice. Good. I want people to come, even if you're not going to work. Um, is this helping you at all? Are you guys working with two? Give me some emojis if you're working. Okay? Because we, we need to inspire each other and, you know. I just gave you the lecture on not worrying about what anybody thinks and about the response, but like, I really need some love right about now. <laughs> okay. Or I can just paint by myself, but I... Now I'm going to keep giving it away. I don't care if two people come on. If there's two people on, then let's talk because that's what this is for. We have to social distance. These are really weird times. Um, and, you know, let's, let's remember that um, we all have something to offer. And if we all offer what we have, everybody will be complete. Okay? You know, I'm not going to you know, give you cleaning tips because I stink at that. But people that have organizational skills, please share them with people. You know, there's some artists out there. They'll show you, you know, how they organized their, their studio. Please, you know, do that. Get on here and, you know, share. Um, because I really, you know, I'm not good with that. <laughs> you know, I, I get it sort of organized, but I don't have any one place. I'm kind of nom a nomadic painter. You know, I paint all over the house because I've, you know, I, I have a studio in the garage, which I rarely can get to because of my vertigo. So I've done a lot of small paintings. Um, and when I get out there, it's great. But then I have stuff out there. R right now I'm doing this at my dining room table. Um, I also have an art cart over by my couch. And if I'm watching television next to my husband or I'm very dizzy, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll, I'll make something. You know, it's, it's, it's healing and for me, uh, you know, I can't not paint. I mean, I can go for a couple of days and not paint because everything interests me in life, really. And I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed that way. But, um, you know, find your new rhythm and realize that, you know, even in your art, it's going to be disrupted for a while. I mean, you might have people, kids home and, you know, you, you, you have to attend to them. Well, that's, you know, that's an art in itself you know, attending to them. And sometimes it feels 
uh, frustrating and you don't have time for you. Um, and it might be hard to figure that out, but we're all learning a lot of different things and it's a season uh, for change and a lot of new ways of doing things. So, you know, carry on. And um, before I go off, I mean, you know, I just wanna pray for everybody. Um, Cause I'm, I mean, everybody knows I'm a prayer warrior, but um, I just wanna, and I pray to God and I pray in Jesus name and, and you don't have to, um, but I do. Father, I just lift up everybody that's on here today. Thank you so much um, for us joining in and checking in. We, we need each other. People were not meant to live alone and not meant to be isolated. In this time where this plague is spreading all over the world, you know, we find that we have more things in common than differences. And the thing that we have in common now is this enemy, this common enemy. And, but we all know that we do need each other and we do need to rally together and we do need to, to work together for strategies and solutions. And we just ask you to give us wisdom, to give us patience, to give us peace, to give us strength because we're weary. Um, and to um, for all the artists out there, just an extra measure of inspiration. And I ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys, be strong and very courageous, all right? And I'll see you, if you want to do it next Friday again, we can, um, let me know, all righty? Uh, you want to take another look at this real quick? I never say goodbye, as you know, all right? It's, 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 it's starting to get somewhere. But remember, sometimes it's getting rid of things, just like cleaning out a closet, okay? And then it can start something else. And I might get rid of as much as I can and see where that takes me. And then I might add some stuff back. All right? And that's what we're essentially all doing in life. We're sussing it out. All right. Thank you. Thank you from around the world. Okay? I'll see you next week if you'd like. And we'll do this, you know, as long as we're on lockdown, I think. Okay? All right, and I'll see if I can get it more interactive next time or can at least start having people pull down into it. Um, or we could possibly move to Zoom, I don't know. Um, but I'd love to see what you're working on. All right, if you work on something today, um, I think somebody here named a, a hashtag. If you want to share what you worked on or what maybe you all of a sudden got inspired or unstuck about, um, share it and talk about it and, and tag, and I'm giving you this so you remember it, just, just uh, hashtag Pat Art and Talk, okay? Hashtag Pat Art and Talk. And post, you know, our, our campfire coffee shop chat and art and, um, you know, share your heart. Okay. That, I mean, you gotta, you gotta let people know you, um, especially on social media, because there's a lot of great art, you know, like, where do you look? But they want to know you and it's, um, it, it, it can be relational. And I had to learn that because I was isolated. So I don't know. I think if you meet me, I'll be the same. <laughs> and I hope we do meet. I hope we can go to workshop soon. All right? All right. Stay good and post to hashtag Pat Art and Talk. All right? And I have a couple of witty ones, too, uh, that I could put on my page. <laughs> but they're probably complicated. But they gave me a chuckle. All right? Love ya. Ma. Art on.